I, Leena Singh, welcome all of you on behalf of Burlington English to the fourth Saturday 4 p.m. webinar series brought to you by Burlington English. I also welcome Dr. Swati Popatwats to the session. And before we start the session, certain house rules, which we always announce, that in case you have any question, please type in your question in the Q&A section that is given in the Zoom bar. Uh, for any question or any other comment, you can use the chat section. Those who are raising hands, I would request you to put their comment either in the chat section or questions in the Q&A section. Uh, we will not be taking any oral responses here. So instead of raising your hands, it's best that you make use of chat or Q&A. Both Dr. Swati and I would be monitoring both these sections. And we generally take all the questions. You can keep sending your questions in the Q&A, but we generally take all the questions at the end of the session. So what are we waiting for when the whole verse and Vedas are here for us? So Dr. Swati, I welcome you to the session once again, and let's get started. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lina. And uh, a warm welcome to all the participants who are joining us from all over India and outside India too. Uh, it shows your uh, zest and passion for learning. And today's topic is a little different. And uh, it is definitely something that will uh, tweak your curiosity as to what is learning from the Vedas to the metaverse. So let's begin. Uh, as usual, Lena is helping me with my PowerPoint and I can't thank her enough. Uh, and I must also not forget to thank Burlington for bringing out this beautiful series that's helping so many educators everywhere. And I'm sure they must be saying a huge thank you to you, Lena, and to Burlington. So let's start the workshop from Vedas to the Metaverse. Very important for us to understand that India was always called the Vishwa Guru. What does that mean? Vishwa Guru, which means a global teacher. We had a very good educational system. We had an education system which was so strong. Our universities were so strong. Our libraries were so vast that people around the globe considered us leaders in education. And then, of course, certain things happened to our country and our education system went down the drain. Uh, we were captured, we were ruled, etc. And we forgot about our traditional education systems. Now, when I announced this workshop, somebody commented that aren't the traditional education systems bad? Aren't we supposed to remove them from the classroom? So let's understand the difference between traditional educational systems of India and the age old systems which we follow presently in our classrooms. The age old systems like rote learning, or stress learning, or uh, uh, having this unnecessary focus on reading and writing, even if the child can't understand it, um, drill activities. These were never part of our traditional Indian education system. These were brought into our country and are actually called the Macaulay system of education. And these are the age old redundant practices that we need to remove from our classrooms and actually embrace the traditional Indian education systems. So I hope I've made the clarity between what are actually the traditional Indian education systems and what are these age old practices that we need to remove. Let's go to the next slide. When I talk about the age old practices, somewhere we have jailed children into writing books. You know, we have we think education is all about writing and we start pressurizing children as young as three years and we want them to write, write, write and write on the line and write neatly and write properly. And somewhere it's become like a jail for children. And today's child who's exposed to the metaverse, what does that child feel about these lines? Let's see in the next slide. This is what the child of today 
is actually wanting to do with these lines just wants to escape out of these lines and they did that during the pandemic for two whole years there was no such stress on writing there was no such stress on drill activities and children flourished quite a lot and it's time for us to rethink is this undue stress on writing really necessary that is a question that we need to ask because both the vedas and the metaverse don't say that you must have these kind of drill activities let's see the next slide let's understand a little more about ai because when we talk about the metaverse we're talking about ai and chat gpt and um, digital technology and i love this quote it says before we work on artificial intelligence why don't we do something about natural stupidity because it is very important for us to understand that we cannot just embrace the metaverse or embrace ai or embrace chat gpt without us having some basic skills and those basic skills are actually not writing skills they are communication skills are we able to frame questions correctly are we able to ask the questions correctly are we able to understand the answers given do we know the difference between right and wrong are we able to read correctly these are the most important skills both they were in the vedas also and in the metaverse so let's see let's move ahead and see what can we do to ensure that we as teachers are not creating a generation of you know silly learners so let's look at this lovely joke which is there on the slide do we want children like this who only understand technology and who are foolish and don't understand the outside world they have no connections between history and geography and english look at what this child is asking this is apple tree okay but where are the trees of samsung lenovo and hp do we want children who are so hooked on technology that they are in some way turning out to be quite foolish look at the generation of message forwarders we see a reel and we just forward it uh, without even thinking whether it's right whether it's wrong it's become a generation of digital uh, you know uh, we we are feeding on to digital nonsense without thinking about it do we want our children in the classrooms to grow up like this or let's see the next slide do we want them to be like this do we want them to be a balance between traditional good practices and the future which is full of technology we don't want children to give up play we don't want children to give up the outdoors we want children who understand that technology the metaverse the chat gpt ai whatever you call it is actually my tool and this child in this photograph is actually using it as a tool i control it i will move it i will use it when i want to it will not control me and that's what we require in the metaverse because that's what the vedas taught us that knowledge is power so knowledge doesn't rule over you you use knowledge and you use it in your life let's see the next slide let's understand some of the ideas of ai what is ai i'm sure you all know that it's the development of a computer system that can perform almost human tasks you know all the all the uh, tasks that we find tedious can now be done by ai and swiftly a, in a second so what is its role in education ai needs to be used as a supplement supplement to what you can't replace the teacher i find this question also so stupid when people say will ai replace a teacher of course not how can a teacher be replaced in the classroom you need a mentor you need a guide you need someone who will be there to support you to scaffold you ai or a machine can never do that 
So what is the role of the AI? I feel AI should be embraced by teachers because it removes a lot of your tedious, cluttered work. You know, it can be used for observations, assessments, for filing, for helping you understand the connection between your observation and your assessment and what can you do better for that child. In so many ways, it makes the teacher's life much more easier. So when we talk about is AI required, how much of AI is required, we need to ask the question, what kind of AI should I embrace? That is the most pertinent question for teachers. Let's go to the next slide. Let's understand that when we talk about applications of AI, we have three most important applications. Number one, classroom management, which means you can even monitor behavior and seek feedback from AI as to what can I do if I'm noticing this kind of behavior. You can have AI as your virtual assistant. As I said, a lot of your cluttered work, your making files and making charts and all can be given to AI. And it does a brilliant job of that. You can also use AI for personalized learning. There are so many children in your class who are struggling. You just have to ask AI the question, what can I do for an individualized education plan for this child who is facing this, this, this difficulty? And AI in a jiffy will give you a plan. Of course, the implementation and understanding of the plan, that's where you need the teacher. So it's very, very important for us to understand that don't use AI just as, you know, a funky gadget kind of a th introduction that, oh, it's there, but I don't know what to do with it. I would urge teachers, explore the world of AI explore it and see how much it helps you with your language, how much it helps you with framing things, how much it helps you with designing things. It's actually made our life easier. Though, of course, I read a recent quote and I agree with it, that I would prefer AI also to do my housework and not only help me with my teaching work, because all of us definitely are waiting for the day when there will be an AI which will look after all our housework. Let's go to the next slide. So what did the Vedas teach us? And when I talk to you about these five points, tell me, isn't modern education also similar? Isn't our national education policy also saying this? Number one, the Vedas said that the child is an active learner, which means do not try to restrict this child in one space for a very long time. As you know, our Vedic schools used to be in the outdoors. Even when they were in the indoors, it was all about movement and not just sitting in one place for a very long time. So the child is an active learner. And in the metaverse, how can children remain active learners? Well, hands-on learning experiences can help children learn how to self-discover, to critically think whether what I'm doing is right or wrong. Active learning was in the Vedas and should remain in the Vetaverse, and it's in the hands of the teachers and parents to ensure it. Number two, the child learns through play. Our national education policy has said play pedagogy, experiential learning. The Vedas also talked about play. Let's talk about the Panchatantra. It was all based on stories. Let's talk about Gijubai Badeka. It was all based on games. Let's talk about the Vedic times. Everything was taught through actual demonstration and doing. So play was always there. When we embrace the metaverse, how do we make play remain an important part of our, of our life? You can help children play a game on the computer and then ask them to create the same game in physical life so that we are telling the child that everything should not only be on the computer because play is very important. And one of our fears is that if children start playing on screens, they will stop playing physically. So let's help children maintain this balance. Let's go to the next slide. What are the other things that the Vedas taught us and how we should also ensure it in the metaverse? 
child learns through relationships. If you notice the Vedic principles, it's all about a relationship, a relationship between the guru and shishya, a relationship between the guru and the shishya's family, a relationship between shishya and shishya. Very much about relationships. And one of the problems of the metaverse is how do we ensure that children maintain relationships which are physical and not just virtual? And that is where we need to bring back our focus. Because as you saw in the pandemic, everything was virtual and children lost their socio-emotional development, which led to a lot of mental health issues. So let's bring back that focus on relationships. The child learns through the environment. The child learns through the environment, which means the environment is very important. What is this environment? Environment is the people in it. Environment is your teaching aids. Environment is what I use. I cannot only do all that on a screen. So when we talk about the metaverse, let's look at what the Vedic principles asked us and how do we bring it in the metaverse. And that is where the teacher comes into the picture of how to maintain that very important balance. The child learns through the environment. And the last one, the child learns through multiple learning styles. Yes, these days we go gaga over the multiple intelligence theory and the multiple learning styles. It was all there in our Vedas. So it is very important for us to understand multiple learning styles. Are we stifling those when we make children only do things on the computer? So very, very important for us to understand that even on the computer, there can be something can be done through art, something can be done through writing, something can be done through reading, something can be done through compiling or scientific research. Each child has a different learning style. And this is where we need to bring the balance into our metaverse classrooms. Let's go to the next slide. Communication. I hope you all know that when you are do, trying to do anything with AI, if you don't frame your questions correctly, then the AI doesn't give you the right answer. I'm sure you all know about it. And that means communication will be the key in the metaverse. So are you talking correctly to your children? Are you asking open-ended questions? Are you helping them create better communication models? Let me show you some examples. Let's look at this activity given by a teacher. It says the cat is hungry, help the cat reach the milk. And what has the child done? The child has skipped that complete activity and gone around it and made the cat reach the milk because the teacher communicated that the most important thing was to make the cat reach the milk, not use the maze. Actually, the instruction should be use the maze and help the cat reach the milk. And these kind of instructions I am finding which are so badly framed in so many publications in this country. You know, we these days choose publications based on the brand name. We don't actually go through the worksheets or the activities or what is the heading given. We think that if it's printed by a publication house, it must be correct. And this is printed by a publication house. It's not done by a teacher. So it's very important for us to understand that we need to be very alert as teachers. What kind of activities are we giving? I must say kudos to this teacher because she gave a right and a star to this child. That means this teacher has a growth mindset. She's ready that, okay, my, my child can think differently. Let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. The teacher has asked what ended in 1896. So the child wrote 1895. And the child is right. But I'm sure this child will be punished. This child will be pulled up. That how can you give such answers? But look at the question asked by the teacher. What ended in 1896? 1895. I think this child is very intelligent. Communication. We are not clear about our communication, neither verbal nor return. Let's look at the next one. 
can you draw this ship? And the child wrote, no. Because you asked me, can I draw this ship? You didn't say, draw this ship. You asked me, I answered, you gave me a choice. So I took the choice. And look at the uh, lack of uh, sentence formation. The This worksheet doesn't even know that when you are writing a question, you write it in sentence case and not in title case. And there are so many such errors because we are taking things from the net. And we think the net is always right. And that's where we come in as teachers. We should know what is right and what is wrong and what is appropriate. Let's see the next slide. It's very important for us to understand that the NEP and the NCF talk about Panchadi. And they talk about Panchadi in a lesson plan. But our Vedas talked about many Panchadis. Panchadis basically means five elements. And it can be the five elements like the Panchakosh, again, are the five elements. Now, here is a Panchadi about the metaverse. So this is my metaverse Panchadi. What does the metaverse need? Which means when we are in, uh, uh, with, uh, in, in, a, in a technology world, what is actually needed? You need people. Okay. You need places because if there are people, people want to go to places. If not physically, then online. If there are places, then there should be things, which means what will I do in these places? If there are things, then there will be data, which means do this, collect this, put this here, uh, download this. There will be data. And data will require technology, which means how do I save it? How do I learn from it? How do I redesign it, etc. Now look at this in the physical world. In the physical world also, there are people in a school. There are places in a school. There is a lab, there is a classroom, there is a canteen. There are things that children have to do in all these places. There is data that the children have in all these places. And then there is technology in some form or the other in all these rooms. That, so, which means these five elements are most important in education today. And that is what we need to keep in mind when we are either working with the metaverse or we are working without the metaverse. Let's go to the next slide. Let's understand some things which were there in the Vedic systems and some things, how are they going to be in the metaverse? Let's talk about mentorship. Mentorship, very important in education. In traditional education system, there was the Guru Shishya Parampara and they, it emphasized on personalized guidance. And then now look at the metaverse. It also emphasizes on personalized guidance. There is something called an algorithm. And when you are there on the computer interacting with the computer, or your child is interacting with the computer, the computer uses a different algorithm. It's very personalized. And this is what we had lost in our classrooms. We were not able to be personalized with every child. We had a one size fits all in our classroom. So the Vedas had a personalized system. Each child was taught according to their likes, dislikes and abilities. And then we came to our age-old classrooms where we forgot about it or were not able to do it. But now in the metaverse, we are able to do it because there will be a different algorithm for every child. Let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about the next word that can be used both in Vedic and in metaverse. Immersive learning. Vedic education used storytelling, rituals, sensory experiences to convey knowledge. What is the metaverse using? The metaverse is also using those kind of interactive environments. You must have seen people wear those things to go 3D. So many different things to immerse children into that learning. And that is why we need to understand there are some similarities that we need to take and accept that the metaverse is not all wrong. Let's accept the rights which are there in the metaverse. Let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about holistic development, a term we educators love to just throw around, holistic development. 
we talk about holistic development but then in the classroom we will only do writing and reading we don't do holistic development and that's why out of a country of 140 billion how many went to the olympics think about it and we talk about holistic development sports arts are just not given importance in our schools why schools in the report card we don't give importance to it we need to understand holistic development is about all my development not just my writing and reading and my cognitive development but my aesthetic development my social my emotional my physical and that's what the vedic traditional education used to do how will you use it in the metaverse because if you are not careful in the metaverse children will lose physical activity children will not understand mindfulness and children will lose connect with socio emotional learning and that is why it is very important that the kind of technology that you select for your school you must check for these three most important things nowadays you have a uh, metaverse for sports also that it guides the children on how to play how to uh, improve their game etc but it is very important that i may learn that on a computer but please let give me time to go on the field to do that that is very important let's go to the next slide let's see what is the next point focus on consciousness are we really consciously doing things because sometimes we unconsciously do a lot of things and vedic practices like yoga cultivated awareness in us mindfulness in us whereas the metaverse makes us want to just do things on our own i mean okay okay i liked it let me click it we don't think i have a hashtag called let the finger linger and i use this hashtag a lot with people when they make mistakes or they send forward things which were not to be forwarded i say let the finger linger and that comes down to impulse control and self regulation in the metaverse we need technology which asks us the question do you really want to forward this for example on microsoft word if i press delete it will ask me do you really want to delete it i think we need these questions from technology because we have suddenly become very knee jerk reaction kind of people and we feel anything that comes on technology is right let's forward it i think we need technology who also cautions us and questions us let's go to the next slide adaptability are we able to adapt ourselves to new environments i must congratulate all educators of this country all educators the way you survived during the pandemic i mean that required resilience many teachers didn't know anything about technology they were not even able to work their zoom accounts and they not only thrived but they made children thrive during the pandemic and that's called adaptability are we preparing our children for adaptability the vedic education system was very adaptive both to children's learning needs and to preparing them for the future in the metaverse we need to have such adaptive technologies for example all of us are struggling with lack of knowledge about special needs and we all have some child or the other in our class who requires that help do you know that technology gives you a lot of solutions and do you know that an autistic child sometimes is more happier on a computer than with a human being so why not use technology the metaverse for this kind of an adaptability let's go to the next slide let's talk about the global theories like maslow's and bloom and let's understand did we have them in our vedic educational system or our traditional indian educational system let's go to the next slide 
Let's understand the Panchakosh. In fact, our NEP is also called the Panchakosha education because we are talking about the five layers or the five sheets of development that are very important in a child. But did you know that the Panchakosha and the Maslow's Maslow hierarchy of needs has a lot of similarities? Let's see the next slide. I want you to see on the left hand side is the Panchakosha Vikas, which is the five sheets of development, which is the Anamaya Kosh, which is your physical layer, Pranamaya Kosh, which is your life force energy or your in internal body. You know, I'm very happy with the Panchakosha because for the first time, it has defined that your physical body is has two layers, a physical outer layer and a physical inner layer. And you need to take care of both. Usually, all physical development theories only talk about taking care of the body, which means eat well, exercise well, sleep well. The Panchakosh is the only one that says breathe well. That's also very important because that is going to help you in a lot of activities. And then you have the uh, Manomaya Kosh, which is your emotional development, Vignanamaya Kosh, cognitive development, which means intellectual development, and Anandamaya Kosh which is your, when you have all these sheets in place, you will reach a level of inner peace. Now let's look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I have upturned the triangle just so that I can match it to the Panchakosh. So you have your physiological needs in the Maslow's hierarchy. It's there in the Panchakosh. You have your safety needs, again, there in the Panchakosh. Love and belonging, Manomaya Kosh. Self-esteem. What does Maslow say? Once I achieve all these needs, I will have my self-esteem, which is very important for self-actualization, which means no amount of intelligence can happen till you don't fulfill these needs. And isn't that exactly what the Panchakosha is saying? Look at the similarities between both. But we all know about Maslow's, thanks to the internet, but we don't know about the Panchakosha, which was actually part of our Indian traditional education system. And that is where we need to go back and bring in a lot of things from there. Let's go to the next slide to understand. Both of these are actually telling teachers what. So if I were to use the Panchakosha, can I use it to plan a lesson? Look at the screen in front of you. I've taken a simple topic like shapes. That's it, shapes. And look how I have used the Anamaya Kosha, which means your outer physical, Pranamaya Kosha, your inner physical, Manomaya Kosha, your emotional intellect, Vignanamaya Kosha, your intellectual development, and your Anandamaya Kosha, which comes through art and craft and aesthetic development. A simple topic like shapes. I can do it with the Panchakoshas. And whatever I spoke about in the slides previous to this, adaptability, holistic development, everything is there here when you use the Panchakosha to develop your lesson plan. This is called Vedas to the Metaverse. And now you've understood the Panchakosha. Put in your AI or your chat GPT, plan a lesson using this topic of history with all the Panchakoshas. And Pat will come and answer from ChatGPT. And all you need to do is study it to understand whether it is using the right references, examples, and evidences. And then use it in your class. Otherwise, a lesson plan like this would have taken days to develop. This is what I mean when I say from the Vedas to the Metaverse. Let's go to the next slide. Let's look at Panchadi, which is given again in our national curriculum framework. It talks about the five steps of a lesson plan. Now, it's not actually only about a lesson plan. It's about the learning process. So what are the five steps of a learning process? You have Aditi, which means the introduction, when I'm introduced to a topic. Bodh, which means when I understand the topic. Abhyas. In our country, Abhyas means are lesson do unko writing karao. Abhyas is a butchered word in our country. 
Abhyas doesn't mean that. Abhyas means where I practice the new concept by seeing it in different forms. Prayog is where I start using this new concept. And prasar means where I'm able to talk or teach somebody else about this concept. Now let's look at the next slide. This is the panchadi. It's taken from the Vedas. Now let's look at Bloom's taxonomy. And you will notice if you compare them, there is a huge similarity. You have understand, remember, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. Translate them all in the panchadi and all the steps are there. So you have your Vedas, the internet gave you the blooms, but you forgot that you already had it in your Vedas. Now let's look at the next slide. Panchadi and Bloom's taxonomy, what are the similarities? Why should you use it in your classroom? Both propose that there are different levels of thinking. When I look at a concept, there are different levels of thinking and I have to engage them all. I have to engage you in the introduction. I have to engage you into understanding the concept. I have to engage you into using the concept. I have to engage you into teaching about the concept or understanding it so well that you are able to talk about the concept. Out goes your rote learning. Your rote learning says, remember but don't understand. And that is the similarity between the Panchadi and the Bloom's taxonomy. Let's go to the next slide. Now I did the same thing. I took the subject called shapes, topic called shapes, and I used the Panchadi steps. How can I use these steps to teach shapes in my classroom? And look at how brilliantly each of the steps have been used the way they were meant to be. And this is called true learning. This is the traditional Indian education system. All you need to do now is use the metaverse, communicate to it properly, and get nice plans from it. Study those plans to understand are they age appropriate? Are they culturally appropriate? This is where a teacher's brains are required. And you can balance the Vedas with the metaverse. Let's go to the next slide. So how should the metaverse use the Panchadi? Which means if I was only using technology, how can the Panchadi help me? So Aditi, in Aditi, you must introduce me to the technology, which is what we don't do. I have just written a poem on helping children understand how to use screens safely. Because in one of my workshops, I realized that we are teaching very young children about how to use a traffic signal. When are they ever going to be on the road on their own? When are they ever going to be driving a car at that age that we are teaching them about the traffic signal? But we are not teaching them about a mobile phone or a television, which they are using every day and sometimes for more than 15 hours. So I wrote this poem using the tune of a very common kindergarten song. You know, something like when you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So on that tune, I've written a song. I'll be putting it up on my social media about screens and how should children use those screens. That's called introduction. That's Aditi. Are we introducing children what to do with them? You know, I've seen these boring computer lessons in schools where they say, this is a keyboard. These are called keys. This is a printer. They know, they know all that. They will teach you not only what is a keyboard, they will tell you what are the parts of a keyboard. Don't teach them all these boring things. Aditi is about technology literacy. Tell me what I should not do with technology. Tell me how is it going to help me or harm me. Both. Both means let me explore technology. And let me ask you relevant questions about it. And then comes pra uh, uh, Prayog. 
let me use technology if you if you go on youtube you will see some of my projects called uh, ipad projects with uh, mahatma gandhi and ipad project or van gogh and the ipad project i have done art with ipads and i have done mahatma gandhi as a topic with ipads and in that i have integrated games dance art everything using an ipad so that that is called the proper balance between the vedas and the metaverse so when you talk about prasar are children able to talk about what they like about the technology and why they are using it or are they able to tell you what they shouldn't be doing with that technology so pancha d is not just limited in the classroom pancha d is a wonderful term that can be used in so many ways so let's use it in the metaverse let's go to the next slide don't trust chat gpt that's one thing i would tell you that now we are all the citizens in the metaverse i must tell you my experience with chat gpt i asked chat gpt to give me frobel's fredrik frobel's gifts and chat gpt made some mistakes so if you see on the left hand side in black it's written i wrote it i said you are wrong because your gift one is not given correctly so chat gpt said i apologize for the mistake and you are right so imagine i had to correct chat gpt because we need to do that don't think they are god now look at the one on the right i then asked kept on asking chat gpt a lot of questions about frobel and um, again they gave me wrong facts so again he said you are absolutely right i apologize for the confusion now let's go to the next slide and then i asked kept on asking chat gpt and i said can you give me more information on this and you will not believe what chat gpt told me it said i am sorry this conversation has worn me out and it looks like we've reached the limit perhaps we can start talking about something else <coughs> of course my husband has framed this because he says that you even drive chat gpt crazy that it's not only me whom you are driving crazy i'm sure my staff will also agree they will also frame this that ma'am you can drive anybody crazy with your questions but look at this there was a limit to how much chat gpt knew about the topic and it wanted to change the topic so please don't think chat gpt has all the answers and please verify everything that chat gpt gives you and for that you need knowledge you need understanding you need analysis and you need logical thinking which you can get when you study the way our traditional educational indian systems told us to let's go to the next slide and then there are tools that uh, teachers feel children will copy from chat gpt so there are tools that you can use that will tell you whether it is copied or not you know you you put it in that app and it will tell you whether it is copied or not i was smarter i made chat gpt give me a definition of savya sashi and then i pasted this definition created by chat gpt on an app which was checking whether it is from chat gpt and it told me 0% your work is completely proper you have not copied anything from chat gpt whereas i had so don't trust chat gpt trust our humanness if you think children are going to cheat because they have chat gpt they were always cheating and human beings always cheat is an extra gene that god gives us which is called cheating you will just have to teach them more about honesty and more about understanding that cheating can be caught so it is rather better not to cheat but we are a country who love to cheat that's why we have we are rampant in corruption maybe because we don't believe in the value system or maybe we think cheating gets us things easily so don't trust that app which tells you i will tell you whether the children's homework is chat gpted 
or not. Let's go to the next slide. I'm going to leave you with this slide because I believe a lot in our Indian traditional education system. I think all the corruption, the cheating, everything that we have now is because we forgot about our ed traditional educational system. If we bring it back, things like honesty, ethics uh, will all come back in fashion. And that's why I feel a teacher, all of us need to understand we also have levels of being a teacher. You are not the only one who can give grades. In becoming a teacher also, there are grades. So for example, on the slide, you see the first kind of a teacher is called an adhyapak. An adhyapak is only somebody who gives you information. That's it, is an adhyapak. Then you have an upadhyay. Upadhyay is somebody who gives you not only the information, but gives you the knowledge about that information. Then comes an acharya. An acharya says, this is knowledge and this is how you have to use it in your skills. Then is a pandit. A pandit tells you, you used it in your skills. Now let's explore some better ways, some more ways you can use this. Then comes a drishta. A drishta tells you, what can you think about now to make this better? Is there any way that you would like to make this whole thing better? And then comes the guru. A guru who helps you connect all your knowledge, your wisdom, your skill, your thinking, your logic and emerge as a superiorly intelligent person. So on Teacher's Day, when you wish somebody, don't just say, teacher to everybody. Don't just say guru to everybody. Ask them or ask yourself, is this person an adhyapak? Then say happy adhyapak day. If that person is a upadhyay, say happy upadhyay day. Very important for us as teachers to come through all these levels to become a guru. Don't take that word so lightly. And please friends, Teacher's Day is a new concept. In our Vedas, we have Guru Purnima. So everything that we have in today's world was always there in our Vedas. And that is why I am so fond of our Indian traditional education systems because we were Vishwa Guru because of it. And please don't associate religion to our Indian traditional systems because it belonged to all of us, irrespective of our religion. We are all aiming to become gurus, all of us. And that is what this workshop is aimed at, to take us from the Vedas to the metaverse, but not just to forget the Vedas in the metaverse, but to take the Vedas along with us in the metaverse to strengthen the metaverse. Let's go to the next slide. I leave you with this because I'm very fond of uh, neuroscience and brain development. Uh, there are two parts to this slide. On the left-hand side at the bottom, you can see that the brain of the child has three states, the survival state, the emotional state, and then comes the thinking or the intelligence state. So as a teacher, it is our job first to ensure that our children are safe. Because if the child's brain is always in a survival state, I'm not safe, I'm not, somebody is going to criticize me, somebody is going to belittle me, somebody is going to compare me, I'm going to be always feeling unsafe. I can't think when I am unsafe. And then comes the emotional state. Am I loved? Am I accepted as I am? Am I going to be supported? And when my survival brain is quiet, when my emotional brain is quiet, then I will be able to read or reach my intellectual brain. Only then will I be able to use my intellectual brain. And that is what we all need to understand. Why did the... Why did the Panchatantra come about. Vishnu wrote about it. Vishnu Sarma was the author. He was also a teacher. 
he taught those five children through stories why stories calm your survival state it calms your emotional state and heightens your intellectual state and look at the visual on the right we are all these days gathering data have you noticed we go to a workshop even today you must have done that you must have taken a picture of the slide we want to gather data you see a good reel we want to download it you see a good article we want to download it and then we go to information that data are we able to convert it into information are we able to find out what knowledge from this am i going to use and then that knowledge when you use you get some insight insight means how will i connect this knowledge and then comes wisdom this worked for me this didn't work for me and then comes impact remember the gurus the definition of the gurus the teachers and this is neuroscience the vedas gave us the same definition and neuroscience is giving us the same definition so i urge all of you who have attended today's session first of all i must congratulate you because it wasn't a very very basic topic it was a very super intelligent topic and yet you found it worthy of your time to come and attend it now ask yourself what is the data that i gathered from this workshop what is from this data the information that i would like to use how would i like to use this knowledge how do i connect it to what i am doing in the classroom or what i want to do in the classroom and after i have done it how do i analyze did it work for me or did it not work for me only then can you say that this workshop had an impact on me as a teacher and as an educator thank you very much this is the last slide i leave you all with the nep we all say what is the nep somebody will say oh it is for assessment somebody will say oh it is too long somebody will say oh it is too short somebody will say no 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 it is for curriculum we all know the story of the blind men and the elephant this is how we all are with the nep we all are think the nep is for one thing or the other but the nep is a amalgamation of all this that we are going to be using in the classroom so celebrate it thank you so, so very much for a, such an informative and engaging session vedas and metaverse two big words but you made it look so simple uh so now the floor is open for questions and i do have few questions but before that i just want to call out for priyanka ma'am sudha ma'am yogita sir anita ma'am manpreet ma'am you are raising hands but please if you have any questions put it in the q and a chat because we cannot uh give you the mic to talk here so if you have any queries please put please do not raise hands please put it in q and a so uh, dr swali the first question is from anuradha ma'am uh, how to deal with special child i mean i mean this is an open ended question but from today's talk like how would you like to respond to that so uh two ways to deal with special children first of all uh, please understand inclusion and don't try to weed off a, a, a special needs children from the school because they many people think of them as a burden so during the interview process only they weed them out okay okay nahi chahiye a good school a successful school is a school who is able to take care of all children then we can say that i am a great school because give me any child and i can make that child the best having said that if you go into the ncf there are 10 questions given of the who which you have to observe children on to understand whether they have special needs or not and number 2 it's very important for teachers to get themselves equipped with the right knowledge about how to deal because when you say special children it's a wide spectrum what is the kind of special need that that child has and here i would say the work of dr samir dalwai is extremely good he has a, 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 a company called bright horizons uh, reach out to him uh, he helps schools and teachers to understand 
what are special needs and what to do for special needs children. So another question, ma'am, this is from Kuldeep Singh, sir, and he's asking, how are education systems survived till now? Is this something wrong with the education system? <laughs> so when you say education system, which means I hope you are talking about this formal education system, which is there in our country. Um, I think we were so busy in um, uh, economic development that we did not focus on educational development. As a country, when we became free, uh, we were told we were a developing country. And for the last 60 years, that's what the world has told us, that we are a developing country. So our focus has always been economic reforms, not understanding that actually educational reforms lead to economic reforms. Read the work of James Heckman, and it is his work that countries like Finland, Singapore, China, USA have all listened to and have revived their education system so that their economic development happens faster. Uh, this question is from uh, Rachna, ma'am. So she's asking you if you could please give definition of guru again. She missed uh, listening to your words when you were explaining it. So basically, a guru is somebody who inspires you to do more than what you are capable of. So uh, uh, the adhyapak and all give you knowledge, give you information, uh, uh, give you skills. But a guru is somebody who tells you, no, you are capable of this. A guru is somebody who is not only like a mentor, but a guru can be tough sometimes. A guru will not take no for an answer from you because a guru knows your abilities. So most of us feel a guru is somebody who is kind to you and you know sweet to you. A guru can sometimes be very tough because a guru will not be happy unless you have done your best because a guru knows that you are capable of it. But that doesn't mean a guru will insult you. But a guru will keep on pushing you, uh, giving you new ways of doing it. And a guru will ensure that you reach the highest level of your performance. So, ma'am, we have two, three minutes more in the session. And we have a few more questions to attend to. Sure. Uh, so, this is a question that has come twice. Uh, that could you please throw some light on how to give higher level of individual attention to a child in a crowded classroom? I mean, though not related to the topic today, but I mean, looks like it's a very good question. You know, uh, I, I recently took a workshop for a municipal school where there are 80 children in the classroom. And my topic to them was about observation of children. And um, I was almost apologetic. And I said, I'm teaching you observation of children, but you all have 80 children. So I will understand if you're not able to observe. And one teacher stood up and she said, why not, ma'am? She spoke to me, of course, in Hindi because I was conducting the class in Hindi. And she said, why not, ma'am? I may have 80 children, but if I observe six of them every day, I will complete all of them in a month. So I would know each child individually. And then those who don't need so much of my attention, I would observe the ones more who need my attention more. So I would know how to cater to and do justice to all the 80 children in my classroom. So I think a good teacher finds the solutions if she cares or if he cares or if he has passion. And I salute this teacher that she was not, um, you know, uh, depressed that I have 80 children in the classroom. She took it as a challenge. Okay, so this is the last question that we are taking, though we have received a lot of them. But I'm only selecting the ones which are relevant to the session today uh, that we did today. So, ma'am, this is from Sukant, sir, that how can we apply Vedic teaching technique in modern classroom? So, actually, uh, what's given in our NEP, you can start with that. You have your Panchakosha, you have your Panchadi, you have your Vikas, okay, or your Smriti. Smriti means memory. 
memory development. Everything neuroscience is talking about now is was actually there in our Vedas. And that is why the NEP has revived it. Because when the NEP studied neuroscience, it realized that there is a lot of connection to what our Vedas used to teach. So if you see uh, yoga, a lot of uh, yogic techniques uh, focus on increasing your attention span. Uh, I, if you just hum, I'll give you one simple exercise. Just hum and let the humming reach right up to your ears. It seems it improves your memory. It improves your focus. So these are all techniques, part of our Vedas and why we were what we were in ancient times. Look at the architecture. Look at the paintings we were able to make without any degrees. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I go gaga when I think and look at our architecture. Or look at our knowledge of the solar system. There were no telescopes at that time. I know in the in the in the global uh, village, we say somebody uh, 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 introduced a telescope. But I feel like laughing because thousands of years back, our our people knew about the solar system. How there were no telescopes at that time. So it is these kind of things that we need to adopt and uh, be proud of. Uh, I think it starts with taking pride in our dharohar, in our traditions and our culture. And then we can move forward into merging it with the metaverse. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Swati. There are a lot of thank yous pouring into the chat section. And I'm with Bratati ma'am who said it so nicely that she's thankful for getting this wonderful chance of learning so many things uh, in the session with you. And I think all of us echo uh, the same feeling and expression here. Thank you so much, Dr. Swati, for this wonderful session. And thank you, everybody, all the participants here for staying engaged and taking advantage of this highly informative session. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, Burlington, once again. And thank you to all the participants.